Hello, everyone. This is Jennifer again with Conversations in Conscious Change. We all are experiencing some interesting things around the planet. And uh, to that effect, I would like to invite one of my amazing friends um, who I find very interesting because she carries a lot with her as in having the same sort of uh, thought process, perceptions um, about the corporate world and how to change the corporate world a bit to actually work in our favor as opposed to against us. We all have experienced uh, not being in sync for a very long time, but um, we have carried on doing the same old, same old, being on autopilot and thinking everything's gonna change. But yeah. um, having looked around, um, I don't think it has. So I'm going to invite uh, Katharina, who has done some remarkable work. She is a consciousness leadership coach, which is interesting, the creator mm -hmm. of Human Plus and a host of the Sync podcast. Her whole thing is about connecting business and spirituality, something very close to my heart. She works at the intersection of consciousness, personal purpose, and business success. Now, who would not want to hear from a person who can bring all these three things and actually have fun doing it? So mm -hmm. welcome to our um, show, Katrina. It's a pleasure to have you. How are Thank you, you Jennifer. Today? How are you doing mm -hmm. today? Yeah, good. Thank you, first of all, for the invitation to join your podcast. I'm really happy that we actually get to have this conversation because we had so many in like events and stuff, like really deep conversations, you know, and it feels that you know the other person um, already on a very deep level. So I'm happy now to just dedicate this time uh, to you and this podcast. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really well. Okay, because our, um, our listeners have I think all of us have been searching for some different ways of approaching life, living, business, work, money, what have you. But I think it, it's nice to hear from people who are awakening. And I think you have awakened so much and I would love to hear. And so would my audience as to how it is and what it is that you actually were doing before you got into Human Plus and how you founded it. What made yes. you do it? You come from a very interesting background. So please do share with us. I will. Um, first, I want to say, I don't know if I'm awake or not, or what that even means. Um, but most certainly, um, my perception of life and, and mm. doing and being has changed quite a bit, actually. Mm. And I actually, can't even say it changed. I think I've already uh, always knew who I, who I was inside, but it took me a while to externalize that. So mm -hmm. bring it from the inside and to the outside. Mm -hmm. um, and that is where my journey comes in. I, <clears throat> so I'm originally from Germany. Um, I left Germany when I was 19 years old. I studied abroad first in Vienna and then in London and in China and like in all kinds of places, um, also worked internationally. And I always, so I was always already seeking back then. Mm -hmm. um, I, I felt like I wasn't fitting into where I uh, was brought up. I always felt like people mm -hmm. are very uh, narrow-minded and I was always seeking, but of course I wasn't aware of myself or of the spiritual aspect of me at the time. So I just oriented myself on what other people were doing and you know what society tells you to do and what my parents told me to do what makes a good human being and um and as i said i studied in london so i was already like in the financial services um industry and uh, so because that's what london is all about and and then i started uh, taking a job in management consulting um, which at the time was, you know, people went really wild about this. They were like super proud of themselves. And I was as well, but I also felt like this is kind of weird to be um, so proud of like this, this job. But I, again, like I didn't have really like alternatives or so. So I thought that is, that's just what you do and you get excited about it and you climb the career ladder and that makes a good life. So I started in, um, yeah, in management consulting first at a smaller firm and then I changed to Deloitte. Um, and um, I was, yeah, I was working for all the big investment banks in London. So I saw a lot, I saw a lot of teams, I saw a lot of 
uh, different uh, leadership inside of Deloitte, outside of Deloitte. Um, and it was just, I think that is probably why I ended up in, in consulting to like, you know, give me in a condensed form, like see so many organizations in relatively short amount of time so that I could then, um, you know, come to the realization that that isn't it. And I always felt kind of uh like like an observer so I was going through the experience and I was also very good at my job and I was also um, progressing very fast but I always kind of observed what was going on and um I observed I witnessed a lot of ego battles and like toxicity and just just not like leadership, not necessarily from, a, there's also exceptions, but generally not necessarily from a place of purpose and like loving kindness. Mm-hmm. And uh, at the time, so I was very conscious of that already, but I didn't know that that was a thing. Mm-hmm. So I just felt like I must be seeing things very <laughs> differently than other people. So I must be a little bit weird. I always thought of myself, I must be a bit weird because most people wouldn't pick up on the same things than I would. But I always say, um, I always I also got initiated while I was walking in that environment through like several different people, actually. There is, uh, for example, uh, at the time I was mentored and managed by, um, now we have these conversations, back then we didn't, um, somebody who's extremely conscious and extremely um, immersed in the spiritual world. Uh, That was one of my first mentors. Um, So he opened me, of course, and gave me uh, different perspectives. I had um, a colleague who who put the book, um, The Power of Now on my desk. Mm -hmm. um, And uh, that initiated me to a different level. And then I had many, many, like, spiritual angels that came my way and just asked me the right questions and had good conversations and good connections with so in a way I was really initiated also in that environment and uh, a lot of people think um, okay well you cannot find spiritual people in or conscious people in the corporate world and this is absolutely not my experience I actually find plenty of them I just find that they mostly stay hidden they think it's not safe to um, show themselves in that way um, but because I never knew a different way um, I I was attracting these people because mm-hmm. everything that you attract is a, is a direct reflection of yourself exactly. so if you show up as a, an open-minded um, kind being you will attract those kind of people so I actually attracted loads of spiritual people in my in my um, uh, consulting okay. times but uh, yeah there came a point where um, I got out of it that was the end of 2018 um, I was at a really just not a uh, not a good project very toxic and uh, somebody asked me what do you still do here when I was complaining about you know the leadership and that I didn't want to be like that and the person said so okay so what do you then still do here mm-hmm. and uh, it's one of one of those questions um, you know every 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 moment every question is also an opportunity to change something and that was just a an opportunity that I recognize that is an opportunity that is a profound question Katarina you should ask yourself this what do you still do here and uh, it hit me just like um, uh, like a ray of light and I knew immediately I have to leave I have to go I need to hand in my resignation and I did it then and there which you know seemed very um, at first I didn't tell a soul as well for a week or so because because I was just so <laughs> happy with my decision you know I didn't also I was shocked and happy yes and I didn't also (laughs) exactly uh, I was kind of in like a like a a tranquil state and I I didn't really needed anyone's opinions whether people thought that that was the greatest thing on the planet or the worst decision of my life I didn't really um, need somebody to input on it and uh, but I I resigned then and there and it seems like you know for people be like how can you do it just like that but I think there's always a process and at some point uh, there's and there's exit points there's entry points into new things and you have to take it you know no one's going to make that decision for you so um, you can contemplate it for a long time but then eventually you do have to jump by yourself and you need to know when to jump off and um, yeah and so here I was I was 28 at the time so fairly young still um, and uh, and thought uh, okay what am I going to do now um, 
and I had booked a, um, this was already, I resigned in October or so. And in December, I had a, um, I, I booked already a trip to Australia for like two months or so. And um, it that was already um, approved by, by the work, okay. uh, by my work at the point. And I was like, I'm just going to go on the trip and see what happens. Um, at this time, I was really like just in free flow. You know, I also, you know, working in London, you earn good money, but you also spend a lot of money. So it's not that I had like an infinite amount of money to spend, you know, but I, I kind of just felt I need to give myself this time to go. And uh, as it then happens, I, um, somebody from my student network said, hey, I'm building a new startup in Singapore and why don't you come along? So then my flight from Australia was actually via Singapore um, and uh, and then I went on my trip and I just never returned to London because I got off in the middle and uh, just um, yeah just left the plane or left yeah left left the journey in Singapore and then here I was in Singapore and started a company an e-commerce company and I have to say this was for sure the had the biggest impact on my career so far because at the time when I left the corporate world I just felt like I needed to get out of the environment and that was my answer mm -hmm. and entrepreneurship is my answer basically and I started this company and I realized it is not aligned with who I am at all um, and I'm this has no purpose you know other than making money it has zero purpose and uh, I this was the year where I got really then into, okay, I think I'm awakening, like something is happening here. And now I really need to align who I am with my external, mm. what I do. Like, mm. I cannot keep on doing this. This was, this is too heavy on my soul. And um, I stayed in that startup for a bit over a year. And then it went down the drain anyway, um, which was a direct manifestation as well from that misalignment uh, that we should never have I mean, we should have done it for that for that lesson, but mm -hmm. it wasn't in in my divine plan, so to say. Um, I mean, it was for the purpose of the realization, but not yeah. for me like doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and then the Corona pandemic hit, and I came back to Europe, and I was stuck at my parents' place where I hadn't been in uh, ten years, and I had uh, I lost also some money in this, and mm -hmm. uh, had nowhere to go. The world was closing down, and that is when I when I just sat with myself for a few months mm -hmm. and um, and started to create what I actually wanted to create, which is starting to um, form around Human Plus. Um, I only, uh, I made the promise to myself, I'm only, if I have to start from scratch, this is the time. Um, and I will only do what I enjoy doing and what brings me happiness and joy and what I'm good at and, you know, where I can create real value um, for people. Uh, I never saw myself as a coach, but somehow that is how, where the universe wanted me to go as a leadership coach and actually working with entrepreneurs and leaders in organizations to, um, you know, develop a higher consciousness and give some perspective of um, how you can well, lead absolutely. companies. Yeah. yeah. Differently. So that, that's, that's, that's one remarkable story there. And so, um, Many may want to still sit on the safety zone and not, uh, you know, want to uh, take any action. Um, but it's not necessary that everyone, and, and, I've, and this has been my experience, and it's not necessary that everyone has to go through a drastic uh, yeah. change to be able to awaken to their own brilliance, because I call it brilliance. If you mm -hmm. have got a level of consciousness and you really know who you are and what you really are here for. It's about uh, unveiling that unique personal strategy, which is yours. And it has to come through you because no one else can actually do what you do. It's as simple as that. All of us That's right. have got been uh, designed in such a way that we are an expression of uniqueness that has to come through. So this level of That's competition right. or feeling afraid or feeling scared, uh, that things are not gonna work um, is totally uncalled for, uh, quite honestly. So um, I'd like to know from you as to, when you were creating Human Plus, mm -hmm. um, and this is for anyone who's listening, if you are 
thinking of delving into entrepreneurship mm-hmm. or um, thinking of even starting off a joint venture or going in on your own or becoming a solopreneur, for example, what are the things you might experience? Uh, and I'd love for you to share what it is that you mm. experienced when you started off. How was it for you? Well, um, how do I say this? I feel like because I I feel like the way I built Human Plus is is couldn't be more different from what I and how I used to do things. Because okay. unlike my previous startup, and unlike what most people do in entrepreneurship, Human Plus is not a means to an end. Mm. So most people, um, including myself, they find an opportunity and then they, uh, you know, get really excited about the opportunity. And that there's nothing wrong with that. Mm. Um, they get extremely passionate. In, in fact, when they are passionate, then they think, well, then I need to really like go all in. Mm-hmm. And they often lose themselves in the process, even if it's for a great cause, even if it's a really amazing mission, they still lose themselves in it. They go too fast. They um, they do things that they don't want to do. They feel stressed out. They burn out. I mean, how many entrepreneurs are there that are, exactly. you know, burning out? Then they sell the company in five years or however long it takes, sometimes two years. It goes, can all go very fast. And then they ask themselves ex- existential questions again, like, why am I doing this? Um, What do I want to do next? And so you see that hamster wheel just keeps on running all the time. So that's what I noticed that that's in my first startup, I was running in the corporate hamster wheel. Mm. And then I quit that. And I didn't realize that the hamster wheel continues (laughs) just in a different environment. So then I was running there. Yeah. And then I quit that too. So now when I look at human plus, I do not want to get into this hamster wheel. Mm-hmm. So I, I, and this is hard because everyone wants you to be in the hamster wheel. And sometimes, you know, my ego wants me, even my, my ego wants me in my hamster wheel. So it's, it's not an easy journey to stay out of it. Mm-hmm. But how, how, how I built it is I allow myself a lot of stillness and space Mm. That is why I don't do too much as well. Mm. Uh, I just really like to be present and uh, and be. And mm. in the stillness, I I receive insights. I receive, um, I know what to do, basically. And it comes from a place of inner knowing rather than my mind telling me, do you mm. have to do this mm. and that? Mm. So when I started it, in fact, I didn't even think it, it would become something because that's not, I, I'm not thinking of it as the means to an end I was thinking I need to find a way to express myself authentically Mm. and by doing that by putting out certain things it helps me to refine my own thinking Mm. it helps me to get clearer on my own message and amazing it seems to seems to help other people or it seems to resonate with other souls and this is why now something is building around it a community um you know, maybe maybe one day it'll really be the platform, the ecosystem where conscious entrepreneurs and leaders Absolutely. come to. Absolutely. Uh, that's that's I, I see the potential in it, you know. Um, but right now I I want to express myself in an authentic way. And through that, um, mm. it helps other people. But I'm not um, so that's I'm I'm almost a bad person to ask, like what's what are the things that you face? Because I'm not running in the mm. in the wheel. Um so what I, the, the, the biggest challenge that I face I is probably to stay present. So I think the, the, the most amazing part of what you've just now shared is, is breaking that hamster wheel run. Yeah. Because then you're an autopilot and you're just doing the same thing, same thing, same thing, and expecting a different result, which really is insanity, as good old Albert Einstein it is. stated. Yeah. <laughs> But the, the central part is this, um, it, it's about, so when you started Human Plus, I'm going to take you back there. When you started mm-hmm. Human Plus, and since you're coming from a very, very uh, astute and profound uh, consulting background, did you have to create processes and lists of what you had to do? And 
this is the only right way and the form and the structure or else you would be a failure. I just, yes. I want to know that from you seriously, because I don't know, I haven't talked to you about that, but yes. uh, you could share that please. For sure. For sure. I have, you know, I have the skills and I have the capabilities to pretty much put a process and a, a system behind everything. That is what I used to do. So naturally, okay. um, and it's when I, I also do sometimes business consulting, that is what I uh, consult people on. Mm -hmm. So naturally I have that ability to do it and naturally my mind goes okay human plus could be this and that and so this is what the business model looks like but through that process I realized okay it's good to have these skills and I use them when I need to use them yes but um I again like to make sure that I'm always like know when to act and when to just be so okay. I really had to pull myself out of this um, out of this constantly doing, doing, doing. I also completely did not understand, literally, I did not understand what it means to be uh, like fully self-employed and a <laughs> freelancer. I didn't understand that you do not have to work from nine till, I don't know, I six or seven or so. It took me maybe a year <laughs> to, um, to understand, okay, well, you can work with a client and then you stop working for like a week and that's okay. And I luckily I moved to Portugal. There's a lot of uh, freelancer entrepreneurs here. So I got perspective through mm. them, but my soul didn't get it mm. or my mind didn't get it. My ego didn't get it. So I think what, what, what you've just now said is so, so amazing. And it is this. So the form structure, business acumen is all great. It's a brilliant skill that we can use mm -hmm. and can use and should use wherever mm -hmm. required. But it is not advisable, if I may add, to mm -hmm. put a form and structure and business skills to you as a being or a soul. Because yeah, that it's honestly really not. just does not work. It doesn't I mean, work, I, no. Quite honestly, uh, Catherine, when you're talking, I put myself through that, okay? I thought, mm -hmm. okay, I'm a CEO. I've done this for the company. Now I'm going to do it for me. And God knows it took me from one place to the other place. As you say, you can yeah. keep going on and on and on and on. But that was being on the hamster wheel. And that was being on autopilot. And it was more about trying to get to me through a process. And that wasn't working for me. And I think no. it doesn't work for anyone who's trying no, to it and change, right? So yes. thank you for that, um, that uh, acknowledgement because... God knows I tried to do the process. Um, okay, now I have to do this. Now I have to do that. It was like, and I was going absolutely blue in the face trying to figure things out because I've been there too, as I was telling, having a chat with you earlier on. Mm -hmm. In 2007, I had all this shift and change. In 2013, I actually flipped and changed uh, and became the butterfly. But it is really interesting to have different people's uh, insights as to how they came about it because it's, yes. really me. It's, it's really cool to see that yeah. we can learn the skills and there's nothing wrong with learning and there's nothing wrong with advancing and to really get to know how things work. But you cannot apply the same things to your own spiritual awakening or becoming no. consciously aware. It just does not work. It doesn't at all. And no. actually, I, I would like to, to share something that sure. maybe helps people to visualize mm. what is going on um, yeah. when they go on the spiritual journey, because I get this question a lot when I work with clients, especially because I work with um, uh, leaders from the corporate world yes. or entrepreneurs. So yes. they approach it with that mindset. Yes. Well, in my business, I do do the plan and then I come out there. And then so how, how do I do this with my spiritual journey? Or they ask me, how do I get to your level? I'm thinking there's not even a level, you know, and there's no level here. There's nothing to, to reach. Um, everyone has a certain uh, thing they can, you know, transcend and develop into, but they shouldn't take me as an example or you or anyone else. Exactly. And the way I describe it to them is it's like we have perception filters on. So imagine you have a have a have glasses on that have uh, pink pink glasses rosy and then colored. Hmm. rosy color. So everything that you see is rosy. Hmm. If you have glasses on that have uh, green the color green, everything that you see has this green sh shimmer, and then yellow has this yellow shimmer, and blue is this blue shimmer. I don't even know if shimmer is a word, but you know <laughs> what I mean. Like everything is it, yeah. <laughs> and so 
on the journey, we, you know, we awaken and maybe we awaken to the fact that we have pink glasses on and we mm -hmm. say, oh, no, I'm on the spiritual journey now. Let me mm. go out and explore something else. Mm. And then they put on yellow glasses and then they ask, how, how did this person get there? They seem to have a, a green view. Then let me put on these glasses. Mm -hmm. And it just keeps on, you put you keep putting on new perception filters all the time. Okay. So every time you put on a new filter, everyone, every time you adapt a certain system or, um, or you absorb it, the teaching from someone or anything, you know, anything that comes externally to you, you put a new perception filter on it. But the spiritual journey is really about not having any filter on so you move away you move beyond the filter you see that there's different filters you see that there's different glasses mm. but you're not looking through the glasses you're looking at all the filters that are available and at given times you might put on this one if you think this is fun or whatever mm -hmm. um, but you're not defining yourself through that lens the filter. Exactly. Or that lens or that you just become aware that there is su such a thing as filter and the so one thing that, that I learned uh, and I think is the very profound is that everyone already knows everything. They do. It's about awakening people by asking them appropriate questions yeah. about what it is that they would like and facilitating that process for them. Because I think that is something that we all, we are not here to fix people. No one is broken, for God's sake. Yes. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. And I think the way that we have, and that's where the, the dichotomy, when we are, we've got to look at it, that when we are as consultants and we have been to organizations where they've, they think that everything is breaking down and it's not working, and now someone has to come and fix it for them, okay? Mm -hmm. I think the same concept has been somehow misinterpreted and it's being shoved onto, now if I have to become a conscious leader, I have to be fixed because I'm broken. So yeah. you see that this constant thing of I'm wrong and judgment and fear and animosity <clears throat> should all be eliminated with a level of curiosity to mm -hmm. actually emerge for people to ask questions because there's mm -hmm. no one right. There's nothing right, nothing wrong. It's all about what is working for you. Is it working or is it not working? Because Everyone yes. is different and unique. To try and shove people into a certain framework has it's no not consequence working. at all. It just yes. does not work. So I, it's about getting to know who you are first. Yeah. Okay. And that's what the consciousness before the leadership is. It's exactly. About the, the awareness. You become aware of yourself. And as mm. you become aware of yourself and you become aware of the journey that, you know, you've come here to do, mm. um, you develop more compassion, more love for yourself. And then you can also extend that to other people. And then your whole organization becomes more, more aligned, engaged, more purposeful, aligned. Exactly. more joyful. Exactly. So that is the consciousness before the leadership. It's not about fixing. Um, and uh, it's not about something that you have to achieve. Exactly. It's simply to be remembered. That's who that's you truly are. That, so, so having said that, have you experienced any organizations that you've approached for business or anything in the, in the recent past? Have they had, have you had challenges with helping them to conceptualize what it is you're talking about? Yes. Okay. Um, I mean, I say yes, not having worked with them because the thing is people, it, they don't come to me or mm. my organization if mm. they're not ready to receive it. Exactly. So I will say, yeah, I will definitely, uh, I would face mm -hmm. resistance if I would work with somebody that, that isn't open to receive this. But I don't work with these people as well. Okay. I, uh, I, I don't it's want to- Word of mouth. Do you yes. conduct your business more word about yeah pretty much right that. now it is and it's also because um i there's also we don't do uh, we, we do b2b but we also do b2c and you know you you've been part of the community there's yes. there's uh, like-minded souls you know that um and it's a different way of reaching them it is uh, so refreshing so. to actually be on one of your yeah i, I love, love having you on those as well really and i said to myself wow i just appreciate this so much because to have a oh, voice in, in, in being a conscious leader, 
Mm -hmm. It's stupendous, quite honestly. Yeah. Oh, and thank you. Them lovely people. And I'll be asking you, because what we are doing here is we're creating something as well, and another mm -hmm. podcast that I'll be creating. And I'll probably have a chat with you later. But it's about the Mavericks, because I'm a Maverick CEO. Is the What is the Maverick? The Maverick is a person who stops status quo. Ah. Okay. Yeah. We are the okay. change makers. And God knows you're one too, you know? That's why we're we are talking to one another. Yeah. Right? So Maverick yeah. is a person who actually stops the status quo and looks at things and questions things and creates things by being innovative, creative, and collaborative, okay? And the CEO is not your chief executive officer. That's boring. That's so yeah. in the past. Mm -hmm. It's about consciousness, empowerment, orchestrator. I see myself as orchestrating the empowerment of consciousness within the workforce and yeah, within beautiful. the clients. And I think that is, that is something that we all are doing at some level, but I'd like to collect all of us and yeah. actually have something really great created yeah. around that. It'll be total fun. I really see that. Yeah, absolutely. Fun. And, you know, I, I really appreciate you as well um, as part of um, members of our community in like the, I think the last session or the first unapologetically awake that we did or so. Uh -huh. I remember you were there and then, um, you know, you always uh, need, like there needs to be like an, a door opener for the next level um, of discussion. And you were definitely that one. You started talking about, I think it was plant medicine or something or like different uh, uh, beings. Different ways, yeah. Bam. And I was like, this is my person. <laughs> now, now, now it opens, you know, so it's, it's, yeah. it was amazing to you. You were really the, that, that, that energy it's, point. So that's the maverick. Can you see that that's the maverick Yeah, coming and yeah. shifting. Okay. Yeah. And we don't have to say anything or we don't have to be seen and appreciated just the presence. And that's why that's the yeah. energy, the energetic uh, empowerment is when you become it, other people receive through it. Yes. No and one, blah, 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 blah. There's like, yalla, you know, just let it flow. Exactly. And then it, you could really feel like, okay, now the discussion opens to a different level. And, uh, and, and this is what I mean, like people, you know, who come to these kind of events and businesses who come to me uh, and business leaders, they need to be uh, ready to receive that. Totally. Um, and I'm not I wasting my you. energy on like um, uh, trying to convince anyone. Exactly. I, uh, Exactly. Why? Why would I do that? You know, there's many people that want to hear from um, about, exactly. about this, and exactly. and the ones that are not ready, they 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 are not ready. They are on their own soul journey. I have no hard feelings towards them. I just don't want to. Exactly, that's exactly it. My energy I, on them. I I work with CEOs and leaders as well who seem to have plateaued, or they mm -hmm. tell me, I've reached a certain level. I don't know what to do, and this this that and the other, and then I create something for them for them that is called the unique personal strategy. Mm -hmm. Because it's about it's strategizing you, not just the work you do. It's becoming mm -hmm. aware of you. And that's what it is I love to do with them. And then you see them flourish and go, oh, my God, I didn't think of this. Oh, my God, I didn't think of that. You know, So it's opening up themselves to themselves and to their knowing of who they yes. truly are and what they And it's challenging for some people you it's know true. I mean it brings up all kinds of stuff it like really when I work with people in this way and mm. also human plus initiate people on a on a very deep level so they 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 they, they might not recognize themselves and you know exactly. and that's a lot to to handle they'd be like fuck you know now if uh, <laughs> you just uh, you know really destroyed the picture that I had of myself yeah. and so your soul really needs to be deeply um resonating with it and then and then it makes sense for mm. people like you and I to work with people in that exactly. capacity and Otherwise, I always tell people that every time that you try and define yourself as something mm -hmm. then you confine yourself to that thing mm -hmm. it doesn't yeah. allow you to become who you truly be yeah Okay. And of course, there's always the question, how do you then operate in this 3D matrix, you know, where mm. everything goes by uh, titles and, you know, and the, people need to recognize you somehow. The essential yeah. part is this. Do you really want to be in the 3D or are you ready to yeah, be yeah. by 5D? Seriously. Exactly. And, and, yeah, true. And, and people like us are, are ready to. The thing is that we have ease and joy that we employ mm -hmm. in the work that we do, right? Yes. So why, why would anyone want to be stressed out when you really can have a lot of fun 
discovering who the hell you are. Hunia, yes, this is what I mean. This is always uh, that you uh, you heard the hamster wheel talking there now as well. Like, oh, how do I fit now in? It's like actually, I can just have conversations with people like you, for example, or other you know people, and then the frequency will reach the right people anyway. And then exactly. it's, it's so easy to then be dragged in. Wow, you should be more strategic about this. Blah 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 blah. But right now, I feel like at this current stage, I feel like um, it's all already like organically. Yes. Like, making its way and that's perfect and and actually it's more ease and it's and you feel more healthy and you be more uh, aligned with what it is that you're doing and when the time comes for it to become whatever it is you see the funny part is this that people don't get that after five years your mm -hmm. business has a consciousness of its own mm. literally yeah. okay mm -hmm. and you've got to ask questions of the business what would you expect of me today? Yeah. What can I expect from you today? It's yeah. actually asking questions that is the most empowering thing to awaken a business, to awaken individuals, to awaken yourself. And those yeah. are the questions that I asked. I remember, I remember when you asked me, so when did you awaken? I had to, I was brilliant at asking questions to everyone else because I was mm -hmm. in recruitment and headhunting, right? But I never ever asked these questions of myself. So what is it that I'm wanting to do with my life? You know, and sometimes yeah. if you go into this oblivious state and wondering, really, I don't even know what the hell it is I'm supposed to do. Yeah. And yeah. that's when the true awakening starts, because if you knew you would be in your head when you don't know is when it is that you're going to be taken to a space of conscious awareness where you get to see, to be and to know and you're ready to receive something totally different. And yes. people have to allow that. It's about allowing you to experience you as a gift. Yes. You're not a pain. That's why I would <laughs> that's why I would recommend to anyone when people say, okay, how do I get out of the hamster wheel? How do I, you know, do like live this? <laughs> the answer is stillness and time and space you literally have to create yes. the space for these things to come into your life if you are busy this is like your energetic field can only hold so much and exactly. if you're busy with all of this other stuff there's no room for yeah. things to arrive naturally and with exactly. ease yeah when and, they... and, and if your mind is completely jam-packed with mm -hmm. all those interesting points of views that you've collected or created and put it into your head and it's remaining there, then there's no space for anything new to show up. You can't fill something. So you, the, the word empowerment I really like is because first mm -hmm. the word empowerment starts with EMP. So you've got mm -hmm. to empty to allow the powers that's within you to actually flow through and for you to receive the power too. Yeah, It's really cool. Yes. So empowerment is, is something that's good. So tell me, um, Katerina, um, if you were to give advice to people who are listening as mm -hmm. to three steps for them to even put their little toe into the water of conscious leadership, what mm -hmm. advice would you have for them? I, I mean, the conscious leadership, I have a triangle framework okay. for that but I wouldn't call it three steps and actually I would not answer it as as that because I, I think it's very misleading for people this has this element again if you do this this <laughs> and this you then are a conscious leader it's not like this <laughs> so I will not answer it in this way um, but what I will say about conscious leadership um, in in my view it is all about becoming aware of yourself about other people and the environment and that's the triangle okay. and when you fully awaken to those dimensions um, and then also there's also a dry triangle so it's not just even one it's the mind body and um, yes. spirit complex yes. on the self level mm -hmm. yes when you awaken to those triangles and it, when you um when you just yeah become aware of it there's nothing yeah. else to say uh, yeah. that is when you evolve towards conscious leadership and there's no three-step process and anyone who says that there is they're full of Hello. yes yes thank you very much yeah. for that yeah. and it is <laughs> not what it is that we say it's what it is that you choose to receive yes. of your own awakening so if anyone is on the brink of of saying i've just about had it i don't know what to do possibly Katharina will be a great person to connect with and 
or, or myself to really yes. get to know how we went about doing it. And it's not necessary. You see, that's another thing. It's not one size fits all, okay? So there are different teachings, there are different methods. And maybe the method that people have told you is the only way, the right way, the perfect way may not be your way. Yeah, that's most so definitely first, not the way. So you can exactly. already- <laughs> so The second that. thing to remember is this, that what if you could learn? The first thing is to learn to get out of your own way. Okay, mm -hmm. and when you can get out of your own way, you will recognize that you are the way that you've mm -hmm. been looking for. And now you require some amazing souls to help you to get there. Okay, and it's or you can actually do this yourself, but become aware that maybe whatever it is you're doing right now, and you're feeling absolutely agitated, frustrated and irritated, it's time to change something. And possibly yeah. Is the way that you think yes allow yourself some stillness and just sit with whatever feeling comes up and and really like listen to it if it if it doesn't you know if it's something that doesn't feel so good then inquire into that why am i feeling this what's what what would i like to change about it hmm. but really the stillness um part is also very important yeah, before i got into this um call i sat on a tree how cool is this right i <laughs> haven't sat on a tree since i was a child and i was like oh there's a tree let me climb up there and, and just sat there you know for like 10 15 minutes mm. i was meditating wasn't doing it just sitting at that sitting. tree yeah and stillness yeah. and creating the space and how much of the yeah. beautiful mother earth is contributing to you and a tree mm -hmm. man awesome. yes exactly the tree of I life just love i just <laughs> love it it's really cool so uh, before we go away, um, I've, I've, I've got all your credentials, uh, Katharina, you, you've sent it to me. Mm -hmm. But if anyone would like to reach out to Katharina, she's on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, mostly. Uh, mostly. And, and I love what she's doing in LinkedIn. So if you guys get an opportunity, please connect to this amazing woman who at this awesome age is being a change maker. And a maverick, by the way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I from the maverick queen. <laughs> yeah, maverick. From, from the maverick to from one maverick to another. See, it's about recognizing the same energy. Yeah. Again, yes. you're doing something, I'm doing something. But what is the, the inherent thing? It is about bringing about change that will yeah. create something greater and grander. So that in this kind of level of consciousness, one thing we have noticed is there is no competition. It's about getting clarity as to what turns you on mm -hmm. and your soul, quite honestly. Yeah. And when you can bring fun and laughter and joy and compassion and kindness and gratitude into that, quite honestly, it's amazing what happens to the people who are receiving it from you. Yes. Because what you, what you do, quite honestly, is such a gift. It's such an amazing gift because you are in your joyfulness, in your fun, in your laughter, in your singing the songs that you sing. Love yeah. is here, I remember. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's actually being you authentically, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's what becomes, you then become the invitation of other people to choose to become themselves too. Now, yeah, isn't that an amazing gift? That yeah, you thank you for, for recognizing this. I, I honestly, believe that there is a place for all of us in this world otherwise we wouldn't be here and if we can just shine our light just the way we are we we will have the greatest joy and we will actually inspire people um so just be as you know an authentically and unapologetically you and uh and the life will um the the world will be a better place i i, I really honestly truly believe that wonderful so those are the wise words from, um, from a person who looks young, but is a relatively old soul, quite honestly. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so too. I am young in this age. <laughs> yeah, but um, um, being a catalyst for change, a maverick and a soulful sister, um, it has been a pleasure speaking with you, Katharina. And uh, if there's anyone who wants to reach out, please do. I will be putting in all the notes. We will be having this on YouTube for you to watch at a later time if you're not here. And also we'll be having it as a podcast that is going to be shared. So 
we are going to be talking about and receiving some lovely insights from this young lady. So please be ready to listen and get to your own amazing brilliance because that's what you are here to be. It's in your difference that your brilliance mm -hmm. actually emerges. So having said that, thank you everyone for joining in. God bless, take care. Thank you, Katerina. Thank you, Jennifer, and, uh, for the opportunity. My pleasure. And uh, you can say bye to all the people who are going to be listening to you as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye uh, if you um if you wish to connect with me please feel free to do that i'm most active on linkedin yes. and uh yeah i'm always happy to connect with like-minded souls there's many and by the way we forgot to mention my apologies she has a brilliant podcast that's called sync in sync in sync so yes, you're going to be in sync. sync with everyone cool yes so thank you yeah. very much katrina uh take thank care you. and god bless